Whoa, Tommy, a new tool, new storage? What are you up to? Well, I actually think it's time we change the area we do our mitering and cut off because that area is too small. Everybody throws stuff in there. It's always in the way. Tell we got to clean it out. Tell us what you really think about it. All right. So what I want to do is I want to make the cutoff station right back here. Oh, use the whole length. All right, because all we have is our clamps here. We got plenty of room. So I thought if we started with two off the shelf cabinets like these. Yeah, lots of storage. All right. Down below. We take the cabinets and we can spread them apart. Lots of drawers, butcher yep. block top. Separate them enough so that we can get the width of the saw in between yeah, the yeah. cabinets okay. and drop a shelf down the height of the bed off of the tabletop here, and everything will be at the same level. Nice long workspace right, right. here, very yep. nice. So the first thing we need to do is lock these two cabinets together so they can be in position here, but when we need to, we can roll the whole thing out as a unit, tilt it for something long, or roll it out of here and get it out of the way. Bigger and better, all right, yeah. I like the improvements. All right, we gotta get the saw out of the way to get started. Oh boy. It's a heavy saw. All right, I'm gonna use this piece of three quarter inch plywood to screw underneath the cabinet to lock them together. But we have to allow for the wheel, so we're gonna cut out four sections for the four wheels. So we've cut the slots for the wheels. We've drawn a line where the side of each cabinet's gonna go. Now we're gonna just put a temporary spacer in here so that when we screw the bottom to the cabinet, this will hold the space between the two cabinets equal. Now these are self-drilling, self-tapping screws go right into the metal cabinet. Nice, nice. It's coming as one now. So far it's working just fine. Yeah. Ready, down, down, down. Clear. So here's the piece for the back. So same idea, Tom. You put one on the back to make it nice and stiff? Right. We'll stiffen it, but it'll also really form a cabinet so we can put the vacuum in underneath. You took the cleat off the bottom there, and then I took it and put it on the back right here. And this is actually going to go on the top. So when we flip it over, the spacing on the cabinets will be equal on the top and the bottom. We put the cleat tight against the cabinet. Same idea, self-tapping screws into the back of the cabinet? Yep. Get that. Not bad at all. I think I carried all the weight, but it was nice having you. There. Yeah, well, you do seem to have a little more weight. <sighs> okay, now we're ready to install the shelf that the saw is going to rest on, but that, as I said earlier, is going to uh, rest down lower so the top of the saw is basically flush with the top of the cabinets. Mm -hmm. Now we could use plywood that we used on the back and the bottom, or we could use some scrap wood over the other side of the room, but I thought we'd use this like a butcher block top that they sell for these cabinets. And I thought it would look nice, blend it right in, nice even line. But the problem is, is we have to figure out a way to mount this to the cabinet. What are you thinking? I'm thinking some wooden cleats. We can use one on each side and then maybe one across the back. Okay. We also have to think about how we're going to attach the wood to the metal. Now we use self-tapping screws for the plywood, which we could use the same for the, the two bys, but it have to be much longer. Another way we could do it is drill some holes through the two bys into the cabinets and use some nuts, bolts, and washers. Right. Problem with this is, the cleat is going to almost line up with all this hardware in the cabinet, like all the drawer runners and there's some other stuff going in there. And we got to be able to reach our hand in there to put the nuts and washers in. And I definitely don't want to drill a hole or damage the runners at all. So I want to use this little thing right here. 
This is a threaded riveted insert. It's threads on the inside that will match the threads of the bolts that we want to use. And they screw right on there like that. All right, so we put four temporary legs here to hold our cleat at the right height so we can pre-drill some holes. Is this magical piece of equipment? Works just like a rivet gun. The only difference is that instead of a standard rivet, this is a threaded part that you screw the threaded insert rivet into. You screw it in like that. And you see this part of the knurled part of the rivet head right there. When I pull this together, watch that compress. See it? Oh yeah, and so the so the metal of the cabinet will be between the front and that bulge that's happening. Exactly. So I keep pulling it. Oh. See there? See yeah. that? That holds the rivet head that's threaded on the inside onto the cabinet. Mm -hmm. There you go. Slide it in there. Whoop. So we'll drill a couple of holes through the cleats in the front to hold the front down. And we also need to drill a couple of holes, one for the vacuum hose and one for the cord. All right, so we get three screws that are gonna go in the back. And I got two screws that I'm gonna drive up in the front. Beautiful. All right, so now we have a couple of flat tables on each side of the saw, but lots of times when you're using a miter saw or a chop saw, you want a fence extension on each side. Right. Put your material again. Sometimes you want to make sure that it's true with the saw. So if we use some one by three right here and hold it up, line it up, and attach it to the table, that's good. And there's all kinds of ways we can do it, but I really don't want to screw it down because I like the fact that we have a nice table to work with when we need it. You don't screw it down, though, it's going to move all over the place. Well, we could use a biscuit like this, put some slots in the table. But a biscuit, like I have a couple of slots here, this biscuit here, and that slot there lines up, but it's not very strong. Right, and so that's just a, a slot on the top part, and you put a slot which is in the table right there. Yep, and biscuits are great for lining things up. But this biscuit right here is two parts, and it's a different slot. And you just drop that in, mm. all right? Now that's yeah. flush. I like that. All right, now I have another one that goes on this side. Slide it in. Okay, now after everything is lined up, I take this, line up the two pieces, and a little tap. Well, that's not going anywhere. It's not going anywhere. What you're saying, you can take that out? I can take it out. Ooh, yes. Look and now that. I have my flat top again. Ready? Wait a anywhere. second, huh? Not going anywhere unless. Unless you pull it off. You want it to. Yeah, now we have a nice flat surface again. All right, we've mounted this aluminum track right on top of the fence right here. And in the top of this metal channel, there is actually a recess that we can attach this tape right into it and it will sit flush 
with the top edges of the groove. It sticks down, we have to line it up with the saw to calibrate where it needs to go. And then we have this piece here that will mount on top of the track, slide back and forth to any measurement that we want. We stop it, lock it in, take our pieces, put it right up against it, and every piece will be exact every time we cut it. Love it. All right, so I painted up all the exposed wood black so it blends right in. Beautiful, we got the fence, we got the tape, we got the stops, awesome. We got it all, now we even got the wheels, we can roll it back. Yeah, rolls is one big piece. Let me just plug it in. So this will give us power to the entire cabinet as well as the saw and vac. That keep it clean too. Look at that time when we finally have ourselves a proper miter station. And look at all the storage. A lot of storage. Now all we got to do is find somebody to organize all this stuff that we got. Very nice. <laughs> all right. Well, that project is done, but we've got more coming up next time. So until then, I'm Kevin O'Connor. I'm Tom Silva. For Ask This Old House. Someone yeah. to organize it? Not me. Thanks for watching. This Old House has got a video for just about every home improvement project. So be sure to check out the others. And if you like what you see, click on the subscribe button. Make sure that you get our newest videos right in your feed.